Fred, I've always been obsessed with this concept of eternity. What was the time before my birth? What will happen to the universe as long as we can imagine? Uh, normally, I've been talking to philosophers, a theologian here and there, but in recent decades, uh, physicists are making some extraordinary claims about what we can know about the far, far future. Uh, you're right at the top of that list. So uh, uh, help me look out. How far can we really look? Well, it depends on how far you want to go. Um, a conservative viewpoint, in my opinion, is to go till the universe is 10 to the 100 years old. And that's an incredible number. Yeah, to put things in perspective, right now the universe is 13.7 to 13.9 billion years old. And it's um, amazing that modern cosmology has advanced to the state where we can quote three significant figures with a straight face. Yeah. But given what we understand about the laws of physics and given what we understand about astrophysics today, we can project what will happen into the future, almost as far into the future as you're daring, as you're willing to calculate. Yeah, that's a hundred zeros, uh, which is not, uh, uh, if the universe is 13.8 uh, billion, is roughly 10 to the 10th. Uh, so 10 to the 100th is not 10 times 10 to the 10th. It's, no, it's 10 to the 90 uh, times larger, right? right, right so right, it's yeah. very, it's a one with 100 zeros yeah, total. Yeah, so it's, it's very, very far. Number. No, we can actually calculate things much farther into the future than that. I said that's the conservative estimate. So then how do you get that, that? How do you, how do you get that? How does physics give me any sort of confidence that, that you can, I, I can believe you when you're talking 10 to the 100th years in the future? Well, to come clean, it's certainly true that the farther into the future we go, the less predictability we have. Yeah. Now, we have that same problem when we do cosmology and we go back in time. The further back into the past history of the universe we go, mm -hmm. the less and less confidence sure. we have, sure. the farther and farther we are removed from experimental confirmation. Right. But nonetheless, we can say some things about the various, um, the very birth moments of the universe. Um, we talk about inflation when the universe is only 10 to the minus 37 seconds <laughs> yeah, old, right. and we do that with a, a straight face. Yeah. So the analog of that going into the future turns out to be about 10 to the 100 years. And, and what are the mechanisms that you get there? I, I know some of the mechanisms with inflation and, and the, the various scalar fields that go into the past that give us good confidence that we know what we're doing and the, and the universe is expanding now, so we run that movie backwards. So we, we have some independent tests of the past. How can you go 100, uh, 10 to the 100th uh, years in the future? What are some of the things that you're looking at? Well, the main r place where that number comes from is that that's the number or the age at which the largest black holes in the universe will have evaporated. So it turns out that right now the universe is filled with structures. We have stars and planets and galaxies right, right, and people right. and all kinds of wonderful things. And as the universe continues to age, all of those objects that have been hard won and produced will eventually go away. Mm -hmm. Now the longest lived objects in the universe, stellar like objects or objects that play the role that stars play, are the black holes and they evaporate over very long time scales. So now when you say go away, I mean, what is it when a star goes away, what, what does that mean? Ah, well, that's a very good question, of course. So what happens with stars is they go through a life cycle. Right. They're born. They live sort of a, a middle life right. that we call the main sequence. Right. And that's the configuration so that a star is burning hydrogen. And that's our, what, our, our sun, sun is, is doing that right uh, now. So it's, can, in, it's a main sequence star. It's a main sequence star. You can look at it and it's, yeah. Burning, yeah. it's burning hydrogen into helium. Right. Now, after it runs out of helium, it will then adjust its structure. And our sun is big enough, it will burn the helium into carbon and oxygen. Mm -hmm. um, and all stars will go through cycles. Most stars are actually not large enough to blow up at the end of their lives, and then they end their lives as white dwarfs, and mm -hmm. that's what our sun will do. Mm -hmm. So the immediate future of stars is to turn themselves into white dwarfs. Okay, and if, and if uh, you, most, of, most stars will turn into white yeah, dwarfs. And a few supernova become, black, become neutron stars or black holes. In exactly, the in fact, three out of a thousand, huh. give or take. Will be will blow up at the end of their lives, and some fraction. Most of those will become neutron stars, and some right. fraction will become stellar mass black holes. Right. Okay. So then the the white dwarfs will live and do various things that we can talk about until their protons decay. Okay. Now proton decay is over what period of time? Well, we don't know. Proton decay is in this intermediate state of science where the the experiments that have tried to measure the proton lifetime are now in their fourth generation, depending on how you count. Yeah. And so far, we've only set a lower limit on the proton lifetime. We know that the proton lives longer than 10 to the 33 years or so. Mm -hmm. There's theoretical reasons to believe that it won't live longer than 10 to the 45 years, well, but that's a pretty big window. Yeah, but, but what, what are those theoretical reasons uh, conceptually? Well, um, the first argument is that 
if you look around the universe today, it's filled with baryons rather than antibaryons. In other yeah. words, we live in a universe of matter rather than antimatter. Anti right. So some version of the laws or some aspect of the laws of physics allows us to have an asymmetry between matter and antimatter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that means one way or another, what physicists call baryon number non-conservation is allowed. And loosely speaking, what that means is that the proton can go away, it can uh -huh. decay, if there's a channel for which to do so. Mm -hmm. We know that there's a channel for which the proton can, can decay because there's a lower energy state available to it, namely okay. a positron. Mm -hmm. So a positron has 2,000 times less mass than the proton, but the same charge. So it's possible in principle for a proton to decay from a proton uh -huh. to a positron if it has a way to get there. Uh -huh. Now we think it has a way to get there because of what we talked about a minute ago, namely that the universe is filled with matter rather than antimatter. So there's a way to break that symmetry. Okay. All right, so so then it's only a matter of time. Then the question is, how long does it take? Right, and if you have a big enough uh, facility measuring the number of protons there, and if you don't, you don't get a decay during that period, you know it's at least that long by the number of protons that you're measuring. Right, and that's where sense. we are right now. Okay. And right so, now, so those... that number is getting lar larger and larger as we're right. getting more. So, so you've set a a, a lower bound on yeah. how, proton, but you you don't know how how, how you're going to go. You don't know how far you have to go to get proton decay. That is correct, but there is a speculation, at least, that gravitationally induced proton decay uh. will be sort of the longest it could be. Uh. Now, that's uh. not necessarily true. It's just a speculation. But if you use that number, you get 10 to the 45 years. Okay, so, so now, how do you get from 10 to the 45? If, if I assume that you're right, that now you can get me to proton decay, yeah. how, do you, how do you get from 10 to the 45 to 10 to the 100th? Because if protons decay and 10 to the 45th, you have a huge amount of time left. Right. Well, see, what happens after the proton decay is that after that time, the white dwarfs and neutron stars will have evaporated because mm -hmm. their protons will decay, they'll right, right. have turned into right. photons, and those photons will expand with the expanding universe. So the only object that will survive that transition, or that marker, will be the black holes. Mm -hmm. The black holes don't care about proton right, decay because right. their protons, if they were protons, are cloaked within the horizon. Right. They don't care. Right. So the only way for the black holes to evaporate is through the Hawking evaporation process. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay. And that takes longer. So the numbers there are that a, a black hole with the mass of the sun will evaporate through Hawking evaporation in 10 to the 65 or 6 years. Okay, so you have solar uh, size uh, black holes, and then we know at the center of galaxies there are black holes that are a million, in a few cases, billion solar masses. Yes, that's right. And the lifetime of the black hole goes like the cube of the mass. Uh -huh. So a black hole that has a million solar masses will not live a million times longer, but a million cubed times longer, right. which is 10 to the 18. Right. And one that's a billion solar masses will live a billion cubed times longer. <laughs> right, right. And right the 10 right. to the 100 number simply comes from imagining the largest black hole you could imagine uh, being made in our right. universe, which is bigger than the ones that we see by a little bit. Right. And, and so, that gives me 10 to the 100 years. Okay, that's very good. Now, exactly. even if you take all of the baryons and all of the matter in the observable universe today and you ball that up into a black <laughs> hole, which you can't do, but if you could, yeah, yeah. that object would evaporate in only 10 to the 100 and 31 yeah. years. Yeah. So black holes are not forever. Yeah. In fact, compared to forever, they're actually pretty short-lived. <laughs>